Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. Eternal Newbie. The extra L is for lesson. Because today I'm going to give you a lesson in how to use a character mancer in Roll20. Full disclosure, when the character mancer first came out, I was not a fan. Oh, wait, you know what? Excuse me, before we get started, let's get some music. Because as we all know, music makes everything better. So, like I was saying, I was not a fan. I tried it when it first came out. And, not impressed. As a matter of fact, for the next six to eight months or whatever it was after it came out, I just, every time I made a character, I made it, I'm like, forget the character mancer. Waste my time. And if you're wondering how I made characters back then, or how people make characters, people still do it today. I still do it sometimes today. I have a video about that. Check it out. It's a bit longer because it takes longer to do it. But today we're going to talk about the character mancer. Before I get into that, let's actually talk about where the character mancer came from because it has a very interesting history that I bet none of you are aware of. You see, the character mancer was the brain child of one Tyrone Powers, a famous swashbuckling actor from the 1950s. The guy was in pirate movies or something. I've actually never seen any of his movies, never heard of him until I went into research really deep where the character mancer came from. Sadly, Mr. Powers died at the age of 44, relatively young, of a heart attack, and his dream was not realized. He did, however, leave behind his notes, which, as you can see, were quite complicated. I mean, except for, like, minus signs and plus signs, I don't understand anything on here. When you look at my notes, they're not quite the same level, but hey, I was close. So anyway... Mr. Power left behind his notes, and it took close to 70 years to decode them, but eventually, we got the Character Mancer. So let's look at it. You might not be looking at this screen, but let's say that you're not as technically savvy as some other people, you're kind of like me, and you may have accidentally messed up and not had the Character Mancer. Let me show you how to restart it. Go to right here, Settings. Go down here, Launch Level 1 Character Mancer. Now you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I have decided for race, just to show you how this works, I am going to make a custom race. You can choose anything in the player's handbook. You can actually go to a Roll20 store, I believe, I've never done it, and buy races, so you can just put them in here automatically. But I'm gonna go custom, because it's not that hard. I've decided I wanted to make a Goliath. And I should probably type right, Goliath. So I typed in Goliath 5e in a search engine and it took me directly to D&D Beyond. This has all kinds of good information. This is basically the same thing as I think the Goliaths are in the Monster Manual. But it's still good to know. It tells you how to play it if you'd like. And you can play it however you want, but this tells you what Goliaths are like and that's a good thing to go by. But what I'm looking for down here is Goliath Traits. Because that's what I've got to put in the character sheet. So let's go ahead and do that. I get plus two to strength and plus one to con. Go down here, strength, plus two. On, plus one. As a Goliath, you can choose your alignment. I'm just going to whatever. You can always change this later if you'd like. Goliaths are medium. It's set on that paper. Paper. Right here. This paper. See, it's paper. It is totally paper. And they have a walking speed of 30. You'd think they're large, but they're not. Proficiencies. Goliaths have this cool little feature right here called Natural Athlete, where they have proficient athletic skill. Which is pretty good, because that's pretty much the most way used skill in the game. Maybe perception. I like perception better personally, but so Goliath is good in athletics. So click on skill here. Click on athletics here. There we go. Now let's add the languages. Goliaths get a couple languages, they get common and they get giant. Just gonna throw that in here. Adding another one because you don't put them both in the same one, which I kinda don't like, but it's alright. I can live with that. There we go. Language is set. Race features. Race features are these things down here. I mean, I could put Natural Athlete in there, but I already got that taken care of. Stone's Endurance, Powerful Build, Mountain Born. I'm just going to cut and paste this stuff. And to save myself a little time, I'm going to do all three of them at the same time. So, cut and paste. I don't mean they're going to end up at the same time. I mean, I'm going to start at the same time. So, there's Stone's Endurance. Now, I'm just going to cut these things out of here. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. yeah, there we go. I'm going to cut these things out of here and put them in the next one. So, add another feature. Make this one mountain born. Put that in the title. And there's a reason I'm doing this, and I'll explain that in a little bit when we get to the end. Add another feature. We got powerful build. And there we go. 
my Goliath is all set up. Let's go next. Now I'm going to choose a class. I don't really care which class I choose because this is just for demonstration purposes. Goliaths make great barbarians. They make great fighters. They make great paladins. I mean, they make other things. But, you know, I want to choose a spell casting class so we can talk about choosing spells. So I'm going with a wizard. Not what you'd expect. As a wizard, I get to choose skill proficiencies. So, let me get to my list here. I'll choose any two of these I want. Let's go Arcana because I'm a wizard. And let's go Investigation because I'm a wizard. I have intelligence. This just tells me other things about a wizard, which you should know if you're going to play the class, but it'll be up there later on, so we're not going to bother reading it right now. Ability score. You can only choose custom. That's fine. We talked about how to put in point by last week. You can search it in Google and use like the first point by calculator that comes up there. But I'm actually this week going to go with rolling. Let's talk about rolling for a second, shall we? I am by no means a master DM. I've DM'd a few games and every single time I've ever had anyone come up to me and give me a character sheet that has insane scores, it's because they rolled them and did it on their own. So don't roll your character. If you're rolling for stats, which I personally like, do not do it on your own. Do it in the chat. Ask the DM. The DM might want to be there to see it. They might want you to just do it in chat so they can look back for it. Just ask the DM. Because I'm not saying all those people cheated, but all those people cheated. Okay, that's not fair. Sometimes you roll really good. I was doing a practice to make sure this worked earlier, and I rolled... Let's see if it's up here. Right here, 15, 17, 12, 15, 12, 10. Then I did another one, and yeah, that one wasn't good. So, sometimes they're good. I mean, those stats up there are insane. Let's see what I get this time. By the way, this is what you put in. I will link this in the... Not link this. I will put this in the video description so you can just cut and paste it the reason I did it six times is because you have six scores some people have you do it seven and you can drop one but most people have you do 4d6 drop the lowest one and this does that automatically let's see what we get okay these aren't so good so that's all right we can work with this we're wizards so definitely want to put that 14 in intelligence but this is not a wizard making guy who knows maybe I'll do that one of these days the rest of them we'll just go with wow See, it's weird, too, because as a player, my lucky game stinks. But I'm usually really good at rolling this stuff. But let's just put them there. You can choose where you want to put them. I'm just going to put them wherever. Keep in mind, you do have your plus two to strength. So whatever you put in here is going to be two higher. Whatever you put in con is going to be one higher. I think I'm going to put that 13 in dex. I'm going to throw that 10 into con, because you don't really want a negative con modifier. It makes you way too easy to kill. And what do I have left? A 5 and an 8? You know what? I just want to be ugly, I guess. 5 and an 8. So you put those wherever you want. And that's it. Next. Background. Once again, you can do a custom background and fill all the stuff out. But in the interest of brevity, I'm just going to choose the one they have on here. And also, just like the other stuff, you could actually go to their store and buy this stuff, I'm pretty sure. So, choose your stuff. Notice I can't choose the languages I've already gotten. So, Halfling and Draconic. Why not? Now, personality traits, you can choose any of these or you can roll for it. Personally, if I'm rolling for a campaign, I'm going to choose them. If I'm going one shot, I'm going to roll. So, roll, 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 roll. I like how they let you roll them automatically here. Equipment and so on. Now, how does my wizard want equipment? Most people are going to go with starting class equipment. That's what I always do, so we'll go with that. Unless the DM tells me differently. I'll take the quarterstaff. Actually, you know what? I'll take the dagger because my strength is garbage. Arcane focus. Scholar's pack. It's worth more if I want to sell stuff. And prayer book. There we go. Equipment's chosen. This stuff is mainly for flavor right here. I mean, this there's reasons I chose some of this stuff. And if you want, I'll do a wizard guide and we can get into that. Although there are some really good wizard guides out there. Cantrips. I always, always, always choose Minor Loser. In my opinion, best cantrip in the game. There's just so many things you can do with it. It's just so awesome. If I have a character named Minor Illusion, I take Minor Illusion. Matter of fact, my fighter, who like maxed out all his important stuff, I took Magic Initiate just so I could have Minor Illusion. Because that's so it's fun. You're going to want an offensive cantrip and whatever you want depending on your race i'm a goliath i can't see in the dark i want light although may chance really good these are a lot of good choices 
Ways or spells? You get six spells. I'm just going to choose spells. I would suggest if you're actually playing this, you just um, actually go and look at the spells and see what they do. These are by no means my recommended spell. I'm not even really paying attention to what I'm choosing. I, mean, I didn't even choose Magic Missile. And as we all know, Magic Missile is D&D. So I am ready to go. Wait, what? I don't understand what this means, so we're just going to move on. A feat represents accomplished grit, determination. Oh, it's just telling you about feats. I don't know why it's telling me about feats, because I don't get to choose a feat. If I was very human, I would, but I'm not. All right, let's go ahead and change the name. My name's going to be Big Smarty. Age. I'm a Goliath. Goliaths live like people. And once again, I got all, all this stuff from here. It talks about like age, alignment, all that stuff. But Goliath, so I'm going to make my guy 32. Height, much. Weight, even more. Eyes, two. Hair, thousands? Question mark, millions? I don't know how much hair people have. Skin, hopefully one. Most likely, you'll actually fill these out normally. I just didn't feel like it. It's like 7.30 in the morning here. I get like four hours of sleep. So to me, ha, <laughs> funny. This just let you look over everything. We did everything all right. Apply my changes. And it has all that stuff filled in for me. Look at that. Man, those are some bad scores. What did I end up with? 24, 35, 49, 54, 62. Yeah, that's bad. If you look at what I rolled before, that's really bad. Anyway, so there you go. That is how you use the Character Mancer. Pretty easy. Now, if I had a nitpick, I'd say put all your languages together because this gets kind of busy. I don't really need these weapons to be separate. Whenever I build it, I build them all together, but that's not really anything. And you are ready to go. Next week, I'll probably do one about how to actually use this sheet, the basics, and maybe I'll throw a few things that are more advanced. If you have something you'd like to see on Roll20 and it's something I know how to do, I'll do it. Like, I'm by no means an expert. I am... Pretty good. I can set up tokens in DM. I can do some of that stuff, but I'm sure there are people that do way more than I do. But if you have a question, let me know in the comments. If there's something you want to see, let me know that's in the comments. Thanks to you so much for watching, and have yourself just an amazing day.